This section is for everyone. Um, and this is going to be sort of your, your general event supervisor procedures and scoring. So I have given team numbers to all of the students. They will have a wristband, and on the wristband is their team number. They will show this to you, and they will need to show this to ensure that they are in the correct hour. There are only seven teams that are allowed per hour into each event. Now, if a student comes to you and says, hey, can I compete? at a different hour. It is up to you to determine whether you allow them in. If you've got the resources and the materials and the stations, fine. But I do not give them permission ahead of time to make that. So they can't use me as the excuse for for changing. And the score and the scheduling was distributed back in August. So this has been public and allowed them to prepare for many, many months. When they come in, uh, they will sign in on a sign-in sheet. Please make sure you do this uh, because any students that do not show up are listed as no score. And I'm going to get into the, the way that our scoring works in a little bit. Um, and so we've got to have that to verify those students that do not show up. In other words, the ones that didn't sign, they're the ones that uh, will receive a no-show. But we need to verify that, in fact, they did not sign. Uh, by the way, if the for the team numbers, if the students do not know what their team number is, then they need to go back to their teacher and find it. And also be careful because we've got schools, who, multiple teams from a single school. So this is why team number is important because this is what we use to accumulate team points. As you're preparing for your events, there is an event template that's up on our website. It's on the judges page and uh, you can grab that and then use it particularly just for making the top part of it. Uh, generally, most of our events, there are only two team members. So this three and four we have on occasion where there could be up to four team members. We, I don't think we don't have that this year. For experimental design, we've got three. So just go ahead and delete if you use this the, uh, the, the the team number team member three and team member four but then everything else here at the top you should have and then you can go ahead and a after this in this word document go ahead and write out your directions so for the event starts time you're going to use basically cell phone time internet time uh, if the teams are late they can come in as long as they don't disturb anyone uh, but they do not get any extra time at the end. And we allow this because it's not a benefit for them to be late. There is 10 minutes between each event, uh, but this year we're using the ed education gym, which is way at the other side of campus. So there could they could be on a bit of a race if they had an event there and then had to come all the way over to the Harris Engineering Center for an event. So certainly let them in. And by the way, they don't have to come in together. There could be a student that will go in first they may get started and there might be a second one in late. So you can allow the, the late ones in. So here's the schedule that I was talking about. There we've got the schedule is the list of events. It shows the location. And then these numbers indicate whether it is C1 to 7, C8 to 14. So if they're C5, then they will compete in anatomy and physiology at this time at 9 o'clock. They can't compete at other times for anatomy and physiology because that's not when they're assigned unless you let them in at a different time. But we will not have any go past the final hour because we've got to get your scoring done and we have to run through score counseling. So each of these are slotted for each of the teams. They know what their team number is. For bridge building, you notice this is self-scheduled. So we'll have an online scheduling system for the uh, teams. They go in and they pick a slot. So I will have for you a printout of when each team shows up during the day. So it will be, uh, it won't be in a nice orderly manner like we've got here, but it will, you know, there will be a collection of teams, no more than seven per hour for the engineering events, but they self-schedule themselves. So you'll get a printout of when those teams show up. Here's the impound window. So from 9 to 950 is impound, but really it'll be starting even earlier. So you want to be ready to start impounding 
early. We will have a meeting for event supervisors and assistants starting at 8, 10 a.m. But I would suggest that one person stays behind at the impound location and uh, starts to check the students in. And then, of course, we've got this rare one for the disease detectives. All teams have to report from 10 to 10.50 at this time. So this shows you uh, the general way that the teams get slotted into each of those hours. But again, you'll be preparing for no more than seven per hour. Uh, let the students know that they do need to clean up their spaces, especially if you're doing a lab event. You can actually build into the scoring, um, you know, uh, a dimension or a score for cleanliness. And then at the end of the day, make sure that the room is put back in order. If you've moved tables and chairs, make sure they're back in place so they're ready for class on Monday morning. And then I also have garbage bags that will be in all of your uh, packages in, in your envelope. And so just make sure you use the garbage bags to clean up the room and then bring those garbage bags back and put them behind uh, the Harris Engineering Center. There's a dumpster out there. For disqualifications, if the event says specifically they do not do something and they are disqualified, follow those rules, obviously. But in most cases, in most of our events, what I mean by disqualification is when a team is outright disrespectful. So this is really a behavior disqualification. So if you've got an issue in which a team cheats, if they are rude, if they have written something inappropriate on the test sheet or the uh, answer sheet, then I need to be notified and we can disqualify the team. And we have had that on occasion happen. Very rarely, but we have had that happen. So this is really, disqualification is reserved for when it is a behavior. You also want to make sure that you note this reason on the scoring sheet and on the student work, and we need to notify the team that they're going to be disqualified for an event. It's really important to communicate this. Now, I've got the list of uh, contacts for the teams. I've got phone numbers that they'll turn in on the morning of the competition. So, you know, come and find us at the headquarters and we can look that up and then we can contact the team. Uh, but it's important to know that there's a difference between a disqualification and when they have just made a mistake in interpreting the rules. Uh, that doesn't fall into disqualification. It could be that they used the wrong type of wood or the wrong type of glue and it was an honest mistake. Uh, or it could be something like, we've had this happen in, in other states where they put little pieces of metal inside the wood to join the pieces of wood together for bridge building. And they only knew about it by using uh, a magnet and they found that there was pieces of metal inside. So that would be a disqualification. But if they just made an honest mistake, we really would score them as last place if there was something in which they could not compete. Uh, so, again, it's anything other than behavior related. Um, if they, although it says here, I've got to change this actually, because if they didn't have safety equipment, this is a no-show. Um, so, this part right here is, that would be considered a no-show. So, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But it says disqualifications for score. I should read my own thing here. Disqualifications for scoring are not when students attempted but did not follow the rules, didn't build something correctly, didn't have the safety equipment, or anything other than behavior related. So I was actually reading that correctly. Okay. So as an event supervisor, you are empowered to make decisions. Uh, the rules are complicated. If you do make a mistake and you catch it in the first hour, by all means, fix it. However, if you catch that there was an error made, for example, you were supposed to use deionized water and you use regular tap water and you discovered that at 11 o'clock, do not make the change. Make sure you keep repeating the mistakes because then it will be an equal playing field for everybody even though you know it was not done according to the rules, but at least it's equal for everyone. The worst thing that can happen, and it can result in me disqualifying the event, is if there's a major change made throughout the day in which teams didn't have equal opportunity. Uh, so make sure you keep making the mistake. If they disagree with you, then they can come, students can come and fill out an arbitration form. 
These are picked up at the help desk, which are just inside the door at, uh, actually they're going to be outside the door if the weather's nice, outside of Creel. And uh, they will fill it out. They will take it to you to sign. And then they bring it to the help desk. And we've got an arbitration team that will evaluate. And that arbitration team is not me. I don't get myself involved in the arbitration process. But if you do, like I referenced before, make a mistake and um, admit to the mistake, but you are making that same mistake over and over, make sure you write that down. And then we'll actually deny it if it's the same conditions for everybody. But the students are not to engage in a prolonged debate, and the arbitration team will make a final ruling. So they should not argue with you. And by the way, we will not entertain arbitration forms from parents or even coaches. These have to come from the students. So on that note, the parents and teachers can watch the outside events. And these are ones that are in open areas, even like in the engineering to atrium, in the education gym. But they're not allowed in the door-closed rooms. Uh, so those are the lab and research-based ones. They are not allowed. Um, they must remain a distance from the event as you choose, uh, and they are not to help the students, and they're not to engage in a debate about problems. Th this is for the students. This is not for the parents to live vicariously. It is for the students. So we want them to be the ones doing the work and engaging in this.